This is the mysterious megalithic city of Nan Madol. Located off the coast of Ponpei Island in the western Pacific Ocean, the dark, colossal basalt pillars of its ancient man-made islands rise from the Emerald Sea. Its remnants, an intricate labyrinth of enormous stones and waterways, capture stories of an ancient civilization lost in the tides of time. This architectural marvel poses a confounding puzzle. How were these stone blocks, some weighing up to 50 tons, transported here off the coast amid the crashing waves and coral reefs? Considered to be inhabited by spirits, according to local folklore, Nanmadol is rife with legends of sorcerers and flying dragons. This mysterious city, once the ceremonial and political hub of the Saudalore dynasty, now sits deserted, with few clues as to the fate of its inhabitants. Who built this island marvel? And what secrets do its ruins tell? A Massive Mystery Nanmadol's construction challenges comprehension. Comprising nearly a hundred artificial islands atop a coral reef, it sprawls over 1.5 kilometers long and half a kilometer wide, hugging the mangrove-laden coastline of Pompeii. This city of stone and sea was built using basalt and coral boulders weighing an average of five tons, with some weighing up to 50. The rocks had to be moved from quarries more than 25 miles away and then transported across the waters of a lagoon. How a society with no access to pulleys or metal tools managed to transport, lift, and position these stones is a puzzle that continues to baffle scientists and historians. Local Pompeians hold a belief in magical forces that enabled the stones to fly to their resting places, and other legends speak of giants who built the city in a single night. This intricate urban maze, primarily constructed between the 13th and 17th centuries, was the creation of the Saudalor dynasty, a unique sea-worshipping civilization established in the 6th century. The islands and their structures were built from colossal columns of black lava rock, naturally pentagonal or hexagonal, up to 20 feet long. These monoliths were arranged in log cabin formations, serving as both outer walls and foundations, and filled with lumps of coral to create raised platforms for traditional thatched structures. An estimated total of 750,000 metric tons of black rock was moved over four centuries, averaging 1,850 tons annually. This had all been achieved at a time when the population of Pompeii was around 25,000 people. The city's layout illustrates meticulous urban planning. Arranged in a grid, the islets are separated by tidal canals. Each islet had a designated purpose. Some were residences, and others were dedicated to food preparation, canoe construction, or ritual activities. At its peak, the island was thought to be home to up to a thousand inhabitants. At the heart of the city lies the central sector, a sacred precinct housing tombs, temples, and ceremonial spaces. Nandoas, the royal mortuary, stands out as the most ornate structure. Encased by two sets of eight-meter-high walls, its gracefully curved corners encompass an enclosed area larger than a football field. One of its cornerstones is estimated to weigh a staggering 50 tons. This cryptic structure sheltered the bodies of kings before their final burial. The Saudalor Dynasty For centuries, the small island of Pompeii, a part of the modern federated states of Micronesia, was dominated by a singular centralized authority, the Saudalor Dynasty. This dynasty was in power from approximately 1100 to around 1628. Pompeian legend holds that the Saudalore rulers were of foreign origin, notably distinct from the native population in appearance. The Saudalore dynasty, spanning many generations, presented an intriguing blend of personalities. Inenin Mwehi, for example, was an enlightened leader credited for building a stable aristocracy in Pompeii. Yet not all rulers were remembered fondly. Sakon Mwehi was notorious for his harsh taxation, causing widespread suffering among the populace. A darker tale still surrounds the Saudalor known as Rai Puenlake, who, according to legend, used magic to find and consume the fattest Pompeians. Pompeii was divided into three states during the Saudalor reign, each further divided into multiple areas. The seat of power was at Nanmadol, where the rulers developed a stratified title system, assigning particular occupations. The Saudalors derived their name from the Pompeian word Sao, meaning entitled to, and Delur, which was the old name of the island. This name was a befitting title for the rulers of a society that was notably hierarchical. 
The city was not just a political hub, but also a religious center. The northeastern area, known as Madol Poe, served as the mortuary sector, with 58 islets containing priestly dwellings and high-walled tombs, including the Grand Royal Mortuary. The Saudalur chiefs used the city strategically, housing potential rivals within its confines to monitor and control them. Sources of food and fresh water were only available on the main island, and they had to be brought to Nanmadol by boat. The rule of the Saudalur was absolute and increasingly oppressive over generations. The entire island, including the inhabitants, was owned by the Saudalur ruler. The ruler leased the land to landlord classes who oversaw commoners harvesting it. In return, the commoners were obliged to present frequent tributes of fruit, fish, and other foods to the ruler. Over time, the demands became so severe that the populace lived in a state of starvation and servitude. The downfall of the Saudalur dynasty came with the invasion of Isokolekel, another semi-mythical foreigner. Offended by the oppressive rule and the lord's disrespect toward the local gods, Isokolekel conquered Pompeii, replacing the centralized Saudalur rule with a more decentralized system known as the Nanmuarki system, which persists today. Myth and Modern Legend a legendary tale in Pompeian culture claims the city was built by the twin sorcerers Olisipa and Olosopa. These sorcerers, hailing from the mythical land of western Katao, sought a place to build an altar to worship Nasinon Sap, the god of agriculture. They eventually succeeded after several failed attempts, giving rise to Nanmadol. The legend tells that they levitated the enormous stones that make up Nanmadol with the aid of a flying dragon. Upon the death of Olisipa, Olosopa became the first Saudalor and fathered twelve generations of rulers. Over the years, the island has developed a reputation for being haunted, with locals calling it the Ghost City. Its eerie aura has even inspired the works of H.P. Lovecraft, who used the city as inspiration for the home of Cthulhu in one of his short stories. Strange occurrences befalling those trying to research the island have contributed to this reputation and led many to believe the island is cursed. In the 19th century, the local ruler made a proclamation threatening a visiting English archaeologist, saying to all, quote, to disrupt the holy ground that once belonged to past rulers with supernatural powers would be breaking the law. This threat had already proved true years earlier, in 1874, when a ship carrying hundreds of crates of artifacts from Nanmadol, collected by Polish anthropologist Jan Kubari, sank in a storm near the Marshall Islands. The curse is also intertwined with legends of giants who once inhabited Nanmadol. Early 20th century accounts speak of a German governor of Pompeii who defied warnings and opened the sealed tombs of the ancient island rulers. Inside, it was said that he found giant skeletons measuring two to three meters tall. A torrid storm arose following the discovery, and the German ruler fell ill, dying the next morning. Such tales have led to the belief among some that the builders of Nanmadol were giants from the lost continent of Mu, or even the lost islands of Lemuria. In more recent times, there have been stories of platinum coffins found in the waters off Nanmadol during the Japanese occupation during World War II. These stories speak of Japanese divers discovering vast wealth in precious metals and pearls in the existence of watertight platinum coffins. It is said that the divers brought bits of platinum to the surface day after day, until one day, two divers failed to resurface. Decline and Legacy Despite its majesty, life in Nanmadol was challenging. The unique construction of the city, while offering security and prestige, also meant that there were no sources of fresh water or food on the islands. Inhabitants relied on their subjects to transport these essential resources from the mainland. During the Saudalur rule, the chiefs received supplies at specific islets, but this system faltered when the rule changed hands. The decline of Nanmadol began around 1628, when Isa Kalekel overthrew the Sandalurs, marking the start of the Nanmuarki era. Although the Nanmuarkis initially lived at Nanmadol, they faced the daunting task of gathering their own water and food. The system became increasingly untenable over time, and inhabitants gradually left for the main island. As Nanmadol's population dwindled, the city fell into disuse and was eventually abandoned. While the exact timeline of the city's decline remains uncertain, its fall was a slow, gradual process. The once vibrant city of canals, bustling with nobles, priests, and commoners, slowly succumbed to the forces of time and nature. Today, Nanmadol and the surrounding area comprise a significant archaeological district stretching across more than 18 square kilometers. 
This district includes the crafted stone structures built on the coral reef flat and the nearby coastline of Pompeii's main island. Nanmadol was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2016 for its outstanding and monumental megalithic architecture. It was also recognized as an expression of the original development of traditional chiefly institutions and systems of governance in the Pacific Islands that continue into the present. However, the integrity of the site is currently at risk. The state of the stone structures is of extreme concern due to the overgrowth of vegetation, the effects of storm surges, and some stonework collapse. As a result, Nan Madol has been on the World Heritage in danger list since 2016. Efforts are in place for its protection and management involving all stakeholders, including traditional owners under the oversight of the Nanwarki chief. Are you ready to unlock the secrets of the past? Subscribe now to Dark Five's brand new Ancient Mysteries channel and embark on a journey to uncover the most enigmatic and awe-inspiring mysteries of ancient times. Leave a comment if there are any ancient mysteries you want us to explore in upcoming videos.